In this video, we are discussing overview of HDFS that is our Hadoop distributed file system. Hadoop distributed file system supports write once and read many that is WORM that is the write once and read many pattern. It consists of data blocks, we are having the name node, we are having the data node and we will be discussing all these concepts with proper diagram and explanation. So, let us go for overview on HDFS. So, what is HDFS? Hadoop comes with a distributed file system called the Hadoop distributed file system and in abbreviated form it is HDFS. So, using the HDFS the main data is stored in multiple data nodes and also replicated. So, a data We'll have, we are going to have a huge set of data, huge amount of data and they will be distributed into multiple nodes and all these nodes will be containing some replications also. So, whenever one node goes down, we can get the data from other nodes. So, the failure transparency will be there and accessibility, availability will be more in this case. And here this hardware is known as the commodity hardware where you will be storing all this data. This commodity hardware means the cheap hardware that means the storage cost will be very cheap in this in case of HDFS. When one node one data node is down the data can be accessed through any other data node which contains the replication of that very particular data which was down in that node. So, in this way that is the main concept of this HDFS. And HDFS is very cost effective as it uses very simple commodity hardware. The term is very important commodity hardware means the cheap hardware uh, to process and to store data blocks. And here this data will be stored in terms of blocks and the block size will be of 128 MB. Just consider this very diagram. Here we are having the single logical storage and this single logical storage is having multiple data nodes and the data will be stored into multiple hard disks you can find here. So, multiple hard disks are there and residing onto this multiple data nodes and this is a single logical storage and this is our this is our known as the name node which is containing the storage reports and the block reports actually it is containing the data about data that is our metadata and from the clients connected on the on the internet multiple computers connected on the internet and these clients will be performing the read write operations on this particular single logical storage of data. So, read and write operations will be there, but always remember that HDFS supports write once and read many pattern. Now, let us discuss three terminologies into details. The first one is our data blocks, next one will be going for name node. And the last one we'll be discussing that is the data node. So, what is the data block? The data blocks are the minimum size of data that can be read or we can write in one shot. There is a minimum size of data which you can read at a time or write at a time. The default size of the HDFS block is 128 MB. The block size can also be changed. The data are divided into different blocks and stored into the clusters. If a certain data which is lesser than this 128 MB, in that case the block will not get filled up and the rest part will remain free in that case. So, when the data size is smaller than the block size, then it will not occupy the whole block in that case. Now, let us go for the name node. This is the name node which is containing the metadata about the data. So, the name node is like the master node in HDFS. Always remember this name node is the master node and the data nodes are working as a slave node. So, it is like a controller or the manager of the HDFS. It is the controller and the manager of the HDFS. It knows that where which data is residing. Name node does not store any data in it, but it stores the metadata of all files. Next, we are going to discuss our data node. These nodes are like the worker nodes in our HDFS. So, that is the manager node and this is our worker node here. So, this stores the data blocks and data nodes report back different information about the data blocks like a list of data they are storing etc. to the name node periodically. So, what about the data it is containing? It will send a report to the name node. In, in the after certain period of time in a 
periodical fashion. Next one is that the data nodes are generally the commodity hardware and they also create blocks and create replication or delete data blocks as stated by the name node. So, in this way the respective operations as guided by the name node will be performed on the data nodes. So, let us discuss some advantages and disadvantages of this HDFS. So, at first we are going for the advantages. So, we can use HDFS to store large data like hundreds of megabytes or gigabytes of data. So, HDFS is actually meant for that. HDFS is designed for write once and read many times pattern that is WORM in short we can call it. So, it has the streaming data access facility. As it works on low cost commodity hardware, so this is cost effective model and cheaper cost of storing data. Now, let us go for the disadvantages of HDFS. The data accessing speed for HDFS is really slow and when we need to access data in less time, HDFS is not so much helpful in those case studies. If we store the small uh, size of data into HDFS, it may take lots of space in the name node because name node is actually containing the the respective uh, metadata of the data going to be stored as the name node stores the meta information about the files. So, this particular HDFS is not suitable for storing small size data. When we need to write the data for multiple times it is not so helpful then and then it is efficient to read multiple times but not writing. So, these are the separate and different disadvantages of using HDFS. So, I think now the conception is getting cleared about the data blocks, about the name node purpose, about the data node purpose, what are the advantages and disadvantages of SDFS. Thanks for watching this video.